In East London, upholsterer Ray Clark draws on his fashion training to create colourful and bespoke seating for a range of clients. Today he's going to Essex to meet dealer Saxon Durrant, who's invited Ray to his showroom to discuss a potential project. I'm waiting for Ray Clark to arrive. You know, I've seen some of his work and it's second to none, it's really good. I've got something for him, it's a country house piece, but it's in a very sorry state. Working with a new dealer, it's like get a sense of what their taste is like and what their style is like. I'm really kind of excited. Hello, Saxon. Hi, Ray. Good to finally meet you, sir. Yeah, good to see you. Got a bit of a project here for you. Uh-huh. You might run away screaming after this. But... <laughs> I might Let's have do. a look. Oh, my word, look at this. Yeah, it's oh. an... <laughs> It was wow. a slipper chair. Edwardian. Yes. Mm. Yeah, hit the nail on the head. Come from a big house, and you know what they're like. They just keep everything until it's Dude. literally fallen yeah. to bits. Slipper chairs became popular in Victorian times. Designed with no armrests and low seats, they allowed a wearer of tight or voluminous clothes to easily reach their slippers or shoes. This leather version came from a country house in Wiltshire, but is so badly damaged it can't have been used in a long time. Would you believe it came from a bathroom? Yeah, wow. So I don't know what that would have done to it. It might have um, made the frame swell up a little bit, so... Well, it certainly would have um, not helped the leather any. No, definitely you know? not. Can't save no. that, really. It's had no. it now. No. But there's the original colour. Look at that. Ah. Is it possible to get that kind of... Would yeah, be nice. and it's not impossible. Nice traditional upholstery. Never been touched. Yeah. Apart smells from the castles. Like it. Yeah, it <laughs> smells a bit. That's um... horse hair. This will be fun. Because it would be nice to actually keep the original hair. Mm. But what Ooh. I really like round here... Oh, what's yeah, that? Yeah, it's brass, brass piping, basically, covered in leather. And what I would really like is to expose all this brass because it runs... There's a frame on the back. Yeah, and, and it, it goes runs all around the bottom. All around well. the bottom. And that is my twist that I'd like to put on it. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I like that idea a lot. That's good. Thank you, Sam. This is <laughs> awesome. I'm not running away from this, I'm <laughs> running towards it. It's amazing. He actually really likes it, which um, amazes me because there's such a lot of work to do. I mean, I, I, I paid 195 for this, believe it or not. 195 is not bad for this. I think after we've worked on this, you, you, you might fetch a four-figure figure for this. His enthusiasm makes me feel a lot more positive about the chair, put it that way. Back at his East End workshop, Ray gets down to business. His deconstruction is a careful process. He's not sure how bad things are oh. and what might be salvageable. It is. It's like doing an archaeological dig, getting into a piece like this. And at the same time, I'm getting to know the chair. I'm also getting a feel for how much force I can apply to the chair. So far, the frame has been very forgiving. Ah. That's it. Next is remove these springs. That's one, two, three. Oh, a little trick I know to try and test and see if they can still be reused. Pull, and then you let go. And if it returns to its original shape, then it's got some life in it. This one seems to be okay. Just got to test all the others now. Once all the springs are removed, he takes off the casters. Because they're annoying me. Thought to be the only features that aren't original to the chair. Then it's time to tackle the brass beading that runs around the rim. It's going to be quite a tricky job to remove this in one piece and or fairly intact. Saxon wants this brass trim exposed as a feature. Please don't snap, please don't snap. But it suffered from years in a damp bathroom. There. You can see how it's oxidised quite a bit. 
I think I may have to just replace this trip altogether. I don't think I can save this piece. And Saxon's going to be a little disappointed at that, I think. With the trim lost, Ray has an even bigger task ahead, saving this battered and worn out seat. In London, upholsterer Ray Clark is restoring a badly damaged Edwardian slipper chair for dealer Saxon. Ray is trying to rescue as many original materials as he can, including the horsehair, which is so dusty he's wearing a protective mask. Mm. I can save some of this hair, but I'm not going to be able to save all of it. But it's going to need a wash and sorting through, re-tease it and then reintroduce it into the chair. With the dusty horsehair bagged up, the frame is soon down to bare wood. Ray now begins to rebuild the 100-year-old chair, sticking closely to tradition. I'm using English jute, black and white herringbone webbing um, because it's exceptionally strong. This webbing stretcher, clamp that to the bottom of the frame and pull down. The tension on these should be, like, pretty drum tight. I bet this frame hasn't been under this much tension in many years. Last tack. Now the big test, if the hammer bounces, then I know I've got the tension. Good. The webbing provides a strong base for the original springs, which Ray is going to reuse. Each is stitched on with linen twine. And on the other side, I take the twine behind the first and in front of the second point. And secured with four anchor points. I should be able to twist the spring and it not move at the base. Once the springs are stitched in and tied together, it's time to reintroduce the horsehair stuffing. After a century of use, it's compressed, tangled and very dusty. Fortunately, Ray has just the tool for the job. What I'm sitting on and what's in front of me is a carding machine. Uh, this is a French version. It's very, very old. They are collector's items, they're very rare. I need to treat it with kid gloves because it is quite a dangerous piece of kit to use as well if you don't quite know what you're doing. It's very sharp spikes in it. And what I'm about to do is feed that hair into this machine under here. And then the teeth grab onto this hair and basically pull it apart. That's that. <laughs> it is really hard work. The word carding comes from the Latin word for a thistle or teasel cardus, as from the Middle Ages, spiky dried teasel heads were used to comb wool. If I keep re-teasing it, carding it through, it will eliminate most of the dust and I'll have a nice bag of hair that I can reintroduce into the chair. It's dirty, back-breaking work, and Ray has hours of graft ahead before the horsehair is fit to use again. Down in East London, Upholsterer Ray is putting the final handfuls of stuffing into the Edwardian slipper chair. Afro comb. Not a traditional upholsterer's tool, but I found it really useful for teasing hair. To build up the required depth and plumpness, he supplemented the original horsehair with cow tail. I always kind of have an image in my mind of how the, the end shape should look as long as I can get uh, the thickness of my hand underneath a stuffing tie. That will give me a guide. The chair will be deep buttoned, and Ray uses skewers to pinpoint the positions for buttoning, and a little trick to make the necessary space in the stuffing. 
I found a real good use for corks. So once I've taken the skewers out, I'll put a little cork there and then build around it. Ray has managed to source an oxblood leather that is a close match in quality and colour to the ruined original. He has marked it up with the button positions and everything's ready to go. He just has to get the scissors out. I'm always a bit nervous about cutting through leather, but it's got to get on the chair somehow. After cutting the leather sections, Ray covers the chair using the traditional method of deep buttoning. You can already see that with a bit of love and attention and care to these pleats, this, uh, this leather is going to look absolutely gorgeous. It's an intricate and laborious process, but crucial to the country house look this chair needs. I think Saxon's going to be really pleased with this chair when it's finished. Upholstery completed, Ray loads up and drives back to Essex, where Saxon is nervously waiting. Being a dealer, we often wear rose-tinted spectacles. We, we see stuff and we think, oh, wouldn't it be great if that looked just as it did back in the day? And Ray's work's really good, but we have to be talking about the same thing. We've got to be on the same page with this restoration. Oh, cool, you're heavy. Hi, Ray. All right, Saxon, how you doing? So here it is, then. Here it is. Oh. Come on, let's have a look. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, look at that. That is amazing. It's had the work done to it. It has. It's I been can tell. stripped back right to the frame. Webbing, springs, kept all the original springs. Well done. As well. Yeah, this will last hopefully another hundred or so years. The leather is it's, so nice. It, it's thank such you. a good it's, hide, isn't it? It's it's a beautiful, it's an ox blood red. I've tried to keep as close to the original colour and patina mm. as was possible. Getting the brass strip, yeah, that was a challenge. It's the best version of a slipper chair. I've ever seen. What an amazing job. The slipper chair Ray took on was one most people would have binned. The leather had rotted beyond saving, and dusty clumps of horsehair were leaking out of loose springs. Sticking faithfully to tradition, Ray has saved the original horsehair stuffing and springs. He's covered the chair in a handsome, deep buttoned oxblood cowhide and sourced a bright new brass trim. I think this is a, a really commercial chair. It's got a masculine look with the yeah. leather and obviously the brass trim as well. I think so. So the, the market for it is a very healthy one. Well, if no one wants it, I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in terms of value, it's got the provenance, it's got your work on it. You know, yeah. I think you're talking about a £1,200 chair, really. Mm. Um, okay. that's, where that's it is now, it's, it's just such a good looking thing. I was quaking in my boots, to be honest. I really, really, you know, I, I really wanted to impress the guy, you know. Well, thanks, Ray. No, thank Cracking you. Cracking job. Sir. And um, next time I come across one of these, I'll, um, I'll be in touch. Hopefully not in the condition this one was in. No. <laughs> be a bit kinder to you next yeah, time. I appreciate it. All thanks right. very much. Take See care. Bye-bye. If he likes it, that makes me like, my job is really done. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that, he's, that he likes it.